Hello everyone, today we will be making a cinematic title inside DaVinci Resolve. So without any further ado, I just want to show you what we're going to do. This is the title. And I'm just going to show you. Nice. So we're going to go back into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to go into our product settings. And make sure that your frame rate is 24 frames a second and playback rate 24. And since it's already 24 frames, I'm just going to click cancel. Now we're going to our media pool, right click and click on new fusion composition. And we're going to make the length zero seconds long. And we're going to make it 80 frames long. We're going to click on create. And we're going to pull this fusion composition onto our timeline. Select the composition and go into the Fusion tab. Now we're in the Fusion tab and as you can see, we have a very clean grid, nothing on it. And here's our media output. So most people, you should probably continue inside the Vint Resolve, but I'm going to do something weird now. I'm going to open the standalone view version of Fusion, just because I think it's a lot faster. And I know this is a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, but I kind of think that it works a lot faster in the standalone version of Fusion. So I'm just going to close the DaVinci Resolve. And here we are in the standalone version of Fusion. Now we're going to go into File, Preferences, and the frame format. We're going to set it to 3840 by 2160. That's 4K UHD. And frame rate, we're going to just make it 24 frames a second. And we're working in 8 bits per channel. So we're going to click on Save. First thing we're going to do, Control Spacebar, and we're going to type text. We're going to bring a text node. Okay. And, and if you want to keep your flow nice and clean, right click anywhere on the flow and go to arrange tools. Make sure that to grid is checked. And also you go into options and make sure that orthogonal pipes is on and not direct pipes because I, it's a lot cleaner this way. So we'll look at our text. Just control and middle mouse button to zoom out. And we're going to type our text. Epic. And we're going to change our font to Supernatural Night. And the link I'll provide in the description. Just zoom in. And we're going to make the font, we're going to make the text bigger. Make sure that it's centered. Very nice. To this text, we're going to control space bar, add a change depth node. And we're going to change the depth to 32-bit float. And we're going to do error diffusion. And now we are going to add a chiseled bevel node. And this node you will not find. It doesn't come with Fusion. It's a tool that I designed and you can get it in the link in the description. It, I'm having like a sale now. And instead of 1125, you can get it for 825, limited time offer. And as you can see, it makes these sharp bevels. Okay. So now we're going to bring in our project files that you can get in the description below. So we're going to, for now, we're going to pull the reflection map, rock grunge texture, and rust texture. And, you know, in few, in DaVinci Resolve, this would just say media in one, media in two, media in three. But since this is the standalone version of Fusion and it's a lower node, it says reflection, rock grunge, and rust. So we don't even need to rename this. In Resolve, we need to rename this. So. We're going to take our reflection map and we are going to pipe it into the input that says reflection map input in the chiseled bevel node. And as you can see, it became a lot shinier right away. <clears throat> so we go into the chiseled bevel node, we bring down the specular intensity just a little bit like that. And we're going to take this rock grunge texture and we're going to pipe it into the texture input of the chiseled bevel node. And if you zoom in, you'll see this weird looking texture. So what we need to do, we need to add a transform node. And we need to add a scale node. Since this is a low resolution picture, we have to scale it up. It is going to fit the whole text because as you can see here, it doesn't work on all of the text. 
So we're just gonna bring it into the viewer here. And I'm gonna zoom out. It's 1920 by 1080. So we need to scale it just a little bit up to cover the whole text. So I'm, I'm pressing control and, and scrolling up to make it larger. As you can see, it covers the whole text now. Now we're gonna go into our transform nodes at the edges to mirror. And we're gonna make it just a little bit bigger because this texture is too small. We're gonna go into our chisel bevel node, make sure that our texture strength is at one. <clears throat> now we can turn off our transparent background. So for most people, you can do all of this in views and it's not like I'm doing anything different. The procedure is exactly the same. So looking at our text, we have to add uh, channel booleans. So instead of pulling it from the toolbar, I'm just going to do control space bar because it's not in the toolbar in DaVinci. So we're going to do, make sure that it's channel booleans and not channel boolean because channel boolean is something else. So we're going to pull this here and we're going to take this rust texture and we're going to also scale it up. It's only 1000 by 750, so we're gonna scale it something like that. And we're going to pipe it in to the in second input of the channel booleans. As you can see, it's not the right size, so we'll just make it bigger till it fits. Okay, that's good. And in our channel booleans, we're gonna turn it into and. As you can see, it became very rusty. So after the scale and the rust, we're going to add a BC node, which is brightness contrast. And we're just gonna turn the saturation down, just like that. And we're gonna get rid of a little bit of the contrast. <clears throat> Maybe just a little bit more contrast little less saturation, something like that. Looking good. Okay, <clears throat> now we're gonna enable our transparent background again. And to this, we are going to add a shadow node. We're gonna pull the shadow, oh wait, we have to actually set it to the viewer first. And let's just keep everything clean here, so I'll just pull this down. And as you can see, the orthogonal pipes are very clean. It's not like the directional pipes. So in the shadow, we're just gonna pull it a little bit down, increase the softness like that. Maybe, And it looks like it's 10 floating above. And even though there's gonna be on a dark background, you can't really see it, but it's like one of those things that you would notice if it wasn't there, but you don't notice it once it's there. And this is our text. Pretty nice. If I do say so myself, that is. So, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is a little. So to this, we are going to add a DVE node. And this is a very cool node. So, and you won't see this in most tutorials because this node uh, is basically, it makes it 3D without actually having to use a 3D render or a 3D merge, it's just, like the After Effects 3D, like you just click on a check mark and it becomes 3D look. So you can do X rotation. I'm gonna set this to default. Y rotation. Z rotation. And what we're gonna focus on is the Z move. So you can make it go behind the camera and you can make it come out like this. And yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to frame zero. We're going to move this behind the camera and we're going to right click and click on animate. In DaVinci Resolve, there's a diamond button here. You just click on it and it creates a keyframe. Key it's a lot more comfortable to do this inside DaVinci Resolve. But it's a little bit slower. I think that it is slower than the standalone version of Fusion. But I think that eventually it's going to catch up to speed. I mean, Blackmagic Design is doing really well with DaVinci and Fusion and all the software that they're developing. So we're gonna move to frame 80. And we're gonna bring this about there. Now, 
Now's the time that we bring in our particles. And I want to give a big thanks to Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot. He makes really amazing stuff. And I'll provide the link to these particles there to his blog. And Fusion actually made these two merge nodes for us, even though we don't need them yet. So I'm just going to cut. Okay, so we're using particles number 10, 5, and 7. Apparently they're in the wrong order. So to each one, we're going to just add a change depth node. <clears throat> so we're just going to add change depth. And I know it's not so comfortable working in 32-bit float, but the results are amazing. I know 16 is also fine, so we can stick with 16. So we can just copy, Control-V to paste, Control-V to paste, and we just pipe them in. Also, one other thing. To make this look really cool, this, this text, we're going to add a macro designed by my friend Emilio. Big thanks to him. He designed this node called Fast Expo Glow, and it's a really cool halo looking glow. Fast Expo Glow. And, you, and I'll provide a link to the description. You can get this on Reactor. Reactor is a, is a plugin for Fusion, as you can see here. You could just open it and it and all of the macros designed for Fusion, the ones that people want to give away for free, you can find them here. And this is also there. A lot of great things for people who are transitioning from After Effects. Amazing stuff you find there, like hexagonal tiles. A lot of people design this stuff, and it's really amazing. So we're just going to pipe this into the Fast Expo Glow. And as you can see, it's just a little bit too strong. So we're going to make the glow radius smaller, bring down the gain. As you can see, it looks really nice. Really cool. So we're going to animate this as well. Bring this to frame zero. Actually, I think we should bring it to a frame where we can actually see it. Since it's behind the camera. You know, it would be a smart idea to pipe this before the DVE. That way we don't have to. It would be a lot easier. So we just click on shift and we drag this out. And we pipe this into DVD, uh, DVE after. So here's our text. We go to frame zero. This is our text. Just wait for it to load just a second. And we're going to animate the glow radius and the gain. We're going to go over to frame 40. And we are going to bring down this glow radius like that. Just takes a while. And we bring down the gain. And we get back our original metal look. So we're going to move the splines later to make it perfect. So after this change depth node with the particles, we're back to our particles now. We're going to add a control spacebar CCV. And as you can see, Fusion had the FX console way before After Effects did. But still, it's a really good plugin for After Effects if you have it. And it's free, so... But anyway, this is a really good way of searching for tools, very, very convenient. So we add CCV, which is color curves. And here are our particles. So we're just going to make a point here and we drag it slightly down, maybe like this until this bending goes away. And we're going to do Control uh, Shift S. Yeah, Control S would be the save. So anyway, we're just going to play this so you can see how, how it looks really nice okay so I'm gonna stop that and we are going to add another color curves to this one send this to the viewer so we see what we're looking at oh what am I looking at in the other viewer we'll just get rid of that for a sec and we're just gonna pull the curves down until the bending goes away I'm just going to do Shift S, and we're going to play this one. Really cool. Okay, now for the last one, I could just copy paste the color curves, 
but each each clip needs their individual attention so we're just gonna add another color curves this one needs to be brought down a little bit more bring it like real contrast like that. something like a shift s and we're just gonna play this really nice so after this dve we are going to add a merge node I'm just gonna you know what we're gonna do we're gonna take this we'll just bring it down here and you just pipe the output over this output and you get a merge node since at frame 131 we should be somewhere at frame 60 really yeah it's a little bit too big so we have to scale these particles how about we just yeah we'll scale these particles up scale and we scale these particles up till we get to 3840 by 2160 since it's the same aspect ratio we shouldn't have a problem And well, lost it. Just a sec. We click on Control Three Eight Forty. Okay, that should be fine. So we're just gonna Control C to copy, and we are going to add the same thing here. Control V to paste. Control V to paste. So we have that here. Now we are just gonna look at our merge again. Bring this to the right place, and this is what we got. So we're just going to do the same thing with this one and the merge, the next merge anyway. So how about we just put it here and we'll just bring the merge right there, pipe it over the output. And the merge we're going to set to screen. And the same thing with the third copy. We're just going to, I know I should bring this a little bit to the side. We need to keep our node graph clean here and there and we're going to set this also to screen as you can see it's a little bit too bright so we're going to add a final color curves after this we're going to add color curves ccv also you can search in the space bar like i did before and we're going to send this to the viewer we pull the curves down so we get like a cool thing like that and again shift s to smooth out the splines um i think we have a little bit too much saturation in the brightness contrast we're just going to bring the saturation a little bit down also what we're going to oh that's actually cool like a game of thrones kind of look okay so what we can do after the scale we can click here and go to transform set the edges to mirror and bring the size of this down let's see what we get it's more detail in that rust okay so the last thing we need to animate is this merge so for the last we need to set our range to 80 frames and this you don't have to do in the davinci resolve tab by the way so at about frame 65 about frame 65 we click on this merge and we are going to animate the blend we're going to animate that and we're going to go to frame 80 78 80 okay we go to frame 78 and we bring this blend down and not all the way down just that you can still see the silhouette of the text kind of like it just goes into the dis distance okay so now we're going to go into our spline window so we animated three things, as you remember, the DVE, which is here, the Z move. So we're just going to fit this to the screen. And in the Vinci Resolve, you also have the spline window. You just have to go over here and there's over here and then you would have a tab that says spline. And now we're going to click Shift S. So what we wanted to do, we want to pull this curve here. And we're going to pull this one here. So it's going to be like a sort of explosive move in. And we want to make the ending as slow as possible because these handles do have a limit. 
So it's gonna go and slow down as it comes here. Okay, now the merge. We also animated the merge. So we're just gonna fit this to the screen and we're gonna select both all the keyframes, shift S, and we're just gonna leave it like that. We're just gonna let ease in and ease out. And the last thing we animated, where is it? Oh, the expo glow, here it is. We animated the gain and here it is, the gain and the glow radius. We're gonna fit this to the screen and we're gonna just select both of them, shift S. And yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, one more thing. We go to the flow. We need to go before the DVE to see what we're doing. Before the DVE. So I'll just go here because the fastest, very fast reaction. Okay, so what we're gonna do to this reflection map, we are going to add a transform node, which is actually a shortcut for that is X, XF, XF. I have a fuse here, but here it is XF. Then we're gonna select OK. I'm gonna pull it here. We're gonna select mirror edges. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the first keyframe here. We're gonna go to our center, click on animate, and we go to the end of our composition, which is 80 frames, and we're gonna gently pull this aside. And we get this sort of animated reflection as if the light is moving across the text, which is actually pretty cool. So we're just gonna keep the everything clean here. Very nice. That's nice. I'm gonna bring this here, keep everything clean. Okay. So we'll look here again. Oh yeah, and the last thing that we were supposed to do, we're supposed to do is before we did the splines, we're gonna go to our transform center displays, but first we have to get rid of this fast expo noise. And we're just gonna select these keyframes and do shift S. So it's gonna ease in and ease out. And I want it to kind of be, oh, I want it to slow down towards the end, like fast in the beginning and slow at the end. So just slowly eases in, but eases out a lot longer. So we're gonna go back to our flow. And this is our text. And this this happens once in a while, but not in the Vint Resolve. I'm not sure why. So to here we're going to add a background. To the background, we're going to apply a mask. Here's the mask. Here's the background. We're going to make the mask like this. Just a little bit more to zoom in and see what we're doing, something like that. And we are going to merge it in the background. So we look here, what do we get? Not much, so we need to go to the frame where we actually see something. Okay, so we just need to do, we need to switch the input. So the shortcut for that is Control T. And now we're going to go to our mask and select invert. So that creates these cinematic bars. And we can make them a little bit bigger, just slightly. Yeah. Okay. So to this, we're going to add a saver node. And we're going to call this cinematic. Epic title and click save. Now, if I were if I were to show you how to render this, we'd go to render range zero to eighty, and we'd click save, and then we would start the render. 
So what a common misconception is that you can't have DaVinci Resolve and Fusion on the same machine, which is wrong. You can have the standalone version of Fusion and DaVinci Resolve on the same machine. So just to show you, I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to copy and I'm going to open. DaVinci Resolve. Just a second. You know, never mind. But we can just copy and paste this whole node graph into DaVinci Resolve and connect instead of the saver, we'll connect it to the media out node. And it would be basically as if we did it in DaVinci Resolve and we can render in there. But basically it's the same thing. So if you like this tutorial, please subscribe, please like. I uh, hope this video reaches a lot of people and hope that it's useful to a lot of people. And this video was this video was inspired by video co-pilots Andrew Kramer's Andrew Kramer's cinematic titles tutorial and thanks a lot for the particles that really they work very well and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Thanks.